So I recently lost my job and now I want to make my own company. For that, I'm working on spec ads so that I have a portfolio which people can see and then hopefully uh, I'll get clients from that. You might be asking yourself what all of this is and let me tell you, that is a very good question. This, my friends, is a professional 3D scanning setup. You might be asking yourself, Nicholas, this does not look like anything professional. It does not even look like anything at all. And let me tell you, you're somewhat correct. Genius as I am, I thought, yeah, I'm going to order a turntable online because, yeah, I'm going to put the stuff on there and then I'm going to scan it. Which, in retrospect, big mistake. Uh, if I don't have a, a good setup, a turntable does not make any sense because I need the reference points in the background for the scan. So this was a waste of money. Secondly, what we have here, what is left of polarizing foil, which I used to build my own linear polarize filter, which currently is on my camera and you might be asking why do I need uh, that at all. You will run into the problem uh, that the object you want to scan which for example this uh, phone charger the reflections um, screw up the results and you won't get good scanning results so you need to get rid of the reflections. How can you do that? Well um, there's a spray which you can use um, to make the shiny surfaces non-reflective but I didn't want to use that or um, slash I don't have it so uh, also I didn't want to spend too much money on this uh, 3D scanning stuff so what I did was I bought polarizing foil uh, the one I showed you um, this one and I cut it up one I used to build my own filter for the camera to linearize the light so only the light waves going up and down are crossing through the filter and then uh, I also put it on the light which I used to light the subject which is here so as you can see I have a small LED light and uh, there's the foil on it and now if we hold this in a 90 degree angle to the camera it will remove all the reflections. The, the problem which we get is that uh, the, op the lenses I have on the camera that they do not focus close enough uh, for me as well as this light is not bright enough <laughs> so <laughs> I needed to find another solution which was well, you might have guessed it. The thing everyone has at home. I'm gonna use a little piece of the foil I have uh, and put it on and I'm gonna put it on the phone so that I can then uh, hold the LED I have here in a 90 degree angle to the camera and then just take pictures all the way around. And now, the cool thing is that you can actually see the effect of the um, polarizer on the camera. If I turn this light, you'll see how at a certain angle there's almost no light coming through it. And if I turn it the other way, there's a lot of light coming through it. And that's the basic principle we're going to use to get rid of the reflections. And I'm going to show you the results so you can compare the difference between the uh, cross polarized one and the normal one. All right, here we are back again. And I want to show you, quickly show you the app I used to take the photos and to make the 3D model, which you can basically use any app you want. You can use Polycam for example, but I used Reality Scan, this one, which if we open it, um, it, will, it will show you your projects and you can just click on the little plus icon here to create a new one and it will open the camera and you can just start taking pictures and that is what I did uh, for for the uh, chocolate bar and I ended up with two results one was this one 
you'll see uh, that we get the texture for the bottom, which I used to, to texture that side. And then I made one uh, for the top side, which is this one. And it looks quite janky, as you might be able to tell. But um, we're going to fix that in our 3D program. So we're going to hop into, you guessed it, Houdini. But you can do that as well with Blender uh, or any other free 3D program of your choice. Just remember the process might be a bit different. So um, if you do it in Houdini, you can do exactly what I did. And if you do it in another program, you might need to figure out uh, some of the things I did in Houdini. All right, let's go. I brought in both of the geometries I made with the reality skin, which is this one, as well as this one. And to get them uh, to be a final product, what I did was I positioned them so that they are both in the uh, in a position where they f where they should fit together like this. And uh, then. I clipped them, so I cut off the bottom slash the, the top part and then um, I gave them like a... Uh, I closed the hole basically so that I can convert them to voxels uh, or VDBs to be more specific and uh, using a few VDB operations I smoothed the whole geometry a bit and converted it back uh, to polygons. So after that we have a final like whole geometry. The problem is we don't have UVs on there so what we need to do is um, we need to transfer the UVs which I did here. The problem is you have uh, this visible seam here as well as like the whole texture itself isn't like perfectly optimal so you have these artifacts right these little artifacts like um, and broken bits which I didn't really want I wanted the bottom texture like on the bottom of the bar as well as um, like some of the little crevices but not all the the like the broken bits on top so what I did was I retextured everything like this, so I've got UVs on it, and uh, then I used the texture paint mask. I painted on the bottom texture part. After that, I exported it as a USD, and then I re-imported it. All right, so we have the bar. Now, what I also wanted is some brownies. So what I did was I created uh, some brownies in ZBrush. First time using ZBrush, uh, so I tried out a bit. Uh, like some different results, one is this one. Which, yeah, okay, I guess, but <laughs> it looks a bit uh, sketchy, to be honest. Next, I made this one, which looks a lot better already. Um, you can't really tell without the texture, but after texturing this, it looks quite all right, especially considering it's in the background. Next, I made some chocolate, basically like a four by four piece, which is broken, broken off already. And I also created masks for the for the broken uh, part as well as the like the clean chocolate part, and I even stamped in the logo. Now that I have all the assets, we can move on to the first dynamics. So let's get into it. I created an inner part for it. It has some thickness to it. I also booleaned out some of these crispy chocolate bits, as you can see on the actual product photos from Coro. They if they break, there's these little darker chocolate pieces inside. So I bullied out some structures for that, as well as made a break. So I can break the bar in half. From there on, I fractured out some pieces, which I wanted to be able to um, break when I break the two halves apart. But moving on, I did the simulation and everything. So if we look at the simulation and I ended up doing it all in Vellum and I used Vellum grains as well as the fractured pieces as shape match uh, pieces. This part is the final simulation I also used and I meshed it like this 
because uh, you can see the like the inner parts are slightly they're like little grains that are bound a bit together um, so I wanted to basically go with the same look besides that I deformed the pieces and calculated some um, curvature on it to use as a mask for texturing and as you can see When it breaks apart, it also breaks like the little pieces, which creates a really realistic look for the for the breaking bar. Besides that, uh, I needed some some pieces uh, exploding, so I made a simple point simulation and some exploding chocolate pieces. For that, it it was quite simple to be honest. I just fractured the sphere and created some pieces like here they all merged together here but it's all single pieces and I created a point simulation and just copied all these pieces on a random like a random piece to each point and out comes the simulation of the chocolate pieces I also did some simulation for the packaging of the chocolate bar so if we go inside here it looks already a lot easier um, and if we go through it it will become clear that that it also is a lot easier um, so the basic idea is I created uh, a hull so this is basically the packaging itself just some folded folded plane and I created some constraints on it as well as some animated points so if we play it back you see some points are animated and I use these points to drive the simulation and if we look at the simulation here you'll see that it crumples the, the plane together with the collision geometry inside and as you can tell, like some details, like this one is actually um, zigzag. So what I did was I created a reference copy of everything and made it into a zigzag pattern and displaced this geometry using the one I simulated. And what we get out is the simulated packaging. Also, we got rid of the um, triangles so it looks a lot better when rendered out. I did use a vellum post process to give it a bit of thickness as you can tell uh, it has a bit of thickness as well as create masks for the texturing again and if we display this one you can also see I uh, visualized that a bit so that you will be able to tell uh, if the marks, masks are correct and as you can see they are so that's easy enough the last thing that's still open is the simulation for the background, which is this one. First of all, I fractured the chocolate I have, like this one. I fractured it into a few pieces and merged them all together. I assigned a random one to a point cloud here in this case. And I blasted away everything that was intersecting and created a low poly reference for everything, which you can see here. And we made this we make this one light again. So you can see here. And I also did some brownies which I hand placed. Using this I could run a simulation uh, with two of these actually. So I created two uh, I multiplied this by two and uh, copied it next to each other. Then I simulated it and we get a simple simulation here. Pretty simple and yeah I copied the original geometry to these pieces so uh, the high-res geometry is actually used finally as well as this one for both of them and these I used as for the background in the uh, shot where the chocolate breaks and that's it that's the whole thing done in Houdini finally the rendering setup which is quite simple as well I did two setups one for the background simulation as well as one for the main simulation and 
I also made all the materials. So I used some normal maps from some free materials from Polyhaven, as well as procedural texture setups to create the materials I wanted. So here's the brownie, for example. Uh, here's the chocolate bar. And after such a long time of waiting, now I can finally show you the result. <laughs>